definitions, a process for employee privacy, a way for the CHRO and the leadership team to make decisions and to approve change requests, your HRIS system and your analytics will not be successful. So data governance is super important. Then we're going to have some fun. So you're about to see how hard this task actually is. We're going to do a facilitated exercise, you and me, where we're going to try to create just one, just one key performance indicator and you're going to find, like, man, this is hard. <laughs> Holy cow. But as you go through this, you'll see here's some of the questions you need to ask as HR leaders. Here's how you need to connect with your chief financial officer and your CIO. And here's what you need to do to bring the insights to life to help drive decision making. Next slide, please. All right, so some key shifts for HR leaders. Future of work equals... People plus machines, right? If you learn anything in this presentation, it's people plus machines. Now, the more you start thinking about that is how can machines and human beings interface together, augment each other, work well together, the more you're going to be able to drive a lot of these future-oriented strategies in your business. The second one is a skills-based collaborative commons, and I think this probably impacts uh, Nepal a great deal is that job titles and job roles are less important today compared to skills. If someone has a very high demand skill, whether it be data science or financial analysis, the ability to retain that individual is quite challenging. So this skills-based collaborative commons, you're actually seeing the concept of Uber move into the workplace where employees are able to apply their skills in multiple environments, multiple organizations, and they're able to go from company to company to company. And as leaders, to retain people with high skills, pretty much of a challenge. The third one is the CHRO is going to have to know some math. He's going to have to be a bit of an engineer in the future. Now, I know a lot of folks get into HR because they don't like engineering. They, they want to be more about the people-oriented approach, customer-facing, employee experience. But there's just no way to get around it, right? Since part of the formula is people plus machines, you will have to learn some engineering, some IT, some technical leadership skills in order to manage HR in the future. Now, just by a show of hands, get everybody relaxed so that we can start participating. When you hire and you do your ratings or any other HR process, how much of this is driven by artificial intelligence? So just by show of hands, is half of your processes influenced by AI? Yes or no? Anyone with greater than half? Wow. So, what you'll find is in Singapore, United States, Europe, everyone would raise their hands. Because in the future, pretty much every process dealing with human resources is going to have some kind of artificial intelligence influencing the decision. So, in it, for example, in the US, when you apply for a job, a machine actually analyzes your resume and tells the recruiter whether you're a good match for the job. So technically, to get a job in the United States, you have to impress a machine before you impress the hiring manager. And that is kind of the future. And then the last one is this automated competency frameworks. Now, this is where it can really add value for your organization. Imagine if you hire someone for a financial analyst role. You work at a bank, you hire them for a financial analyst role, and the minute you assign them to a job title in the system, it gives you an entire development plan in an automated way. It says what job assignments they need, what courses they should take, what certifications are required, and it assigns them a mentor, and also says what they need to do every year of their career journey in order to develop into higher level roles. That's what's cool about analytics, is it helps scale and improve the efficiency of how you do things. Okay, next slide, please. 
All right, so some top five HR analytics best practices. The first one, and I think this one is critical, is that going from zero to one in anything is the hardest to do, right? If you've ever started an exercise routine, just getting going is the hardest to do, right? Uh, when you're doing something at work and you're trying to learn a new skill, the first few weeks, the first few months, it's challenging. It's the same with data analytics. Going from zero to one is the most challenging thing. That is the phase where the CHRO and the director of HR has to lend the sponsorship. So that's best practice number one. Number two, you got to have governance in every single process. And you'll see it as we go through this facilitated exercise. There should be rules, committees. It sounds scary. It's not like the union. So I'm not saying like uh, when the CEO is here that we're creating another union, right? But you have to govern your data because quality data leads to quality decision making. But the only way you have quality data is through good governance. The next one is the technology roadmap should actually align with how you make decisions. Now, just out of, you know, show of hands again, because we're going to start working on this as an audience. How many of you have technologies that don't do what you thought they were going to do when you bought them? <laughs> Steve? Anybody? So you have all your systems. Wow, we, we got to come to Nepal more, man. They, they got everything working with their HRS system. It's great. But you need to make sure that your technology roadmap, your uh, core HR system, your learning system, your talent acquisition processes, all of those things should be driving towards how you make decisions. And then the last two really are about the same thing, is that when you work on analytics, you want to be very narrow, very defined on the use cases or the projects that you sponsor. You don't want to create a big project. You want it to be very narrow. And then second to that, you want to over-communicate results. So a good technique you can use is called the sandwich method. So think of it as slice of bread is something positive. The meat is the critique or something that needs to be worked on. And then the other slice of bread is something positive. So when you're dealing with analytics, you over-communicate the results. You have two positives for one negative, and that helps the executive stay involved. The last one is you just want to build that digital skill set, that digital fluency in all levels of the organization. So again, it's different in Nepal, but in some organizations I've worked in, in different countries, on day one, if an HR business partner is hired, they start taking data science classes. They start learning about HR technology on the first day as part of their development. Next slide, please. All right. So this is where the process comes in, and we're going to use this as we do our facilitated exercise. So this is the people analytics value chain. Now, one of the CEOs, he had an interesting quote. He said that culture eats strategy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? I would agree with that, but I would say that strategy is the appetizer. <laughs> Data is the main meal, right? And this is really where the rubber meets the road. So when you think about it, on the left-hand side, is, it's a sequence, is where you start. And as you progress to the right, you get to the end of the value chain. And there's a loop process. Now, I'm sure all of you, as you work on HR, you're used to these things. You're used to workforce planning, culture, learning and development. But how many of you, just by show of hands, actually do it in order, in this order? Anybody? You do it in order. All right. That's awesome. All right. That's fantastic. Now, why is it that we actually want to do this analytics value chain in order? Why do you think, and this is where I'll have uh, some audience contribution. We'll get started. Why would you start with the workforce plan? then go into organizational culture, then look at how you hire, then look at how you train and develop, 
before you actually look at how you do ratings, how you do succession planning, and so forth. Why do you think talent management is last? Any brave uh, participant want to give an answer? We have Jeopardy in the U.S. Anyone want to talk about the, uh, the Jeopardy countdown? Any ideas? Yes, sir. Yeah, this gentleman right here. Actually, these all are the process. Talent management is the performance part of the performance appraisal. So after working all and from strategic workforce planning, organization culture, talent acquisition, learning and development, then we'll utilize the persons and we'll uh, management the talent, you know. So that's what I'm from G4S Nepal. So we are doing in you know, a international, yes. you know, uh, onboarding, offboarding, and exit interview like that. Online process we do have. So uh, through that we are doing, but we are just initial phase. So so we are implementing that all. Oh, that's that's very cool. Exactly. So the idea is, Thank uh, you. like, great comment. The idea is is that with each step, you're actually making the next step easier. You're actually building on the prior process and where most of the decisions come in is right here. So we had the CEOs join us. Most of the CEO decisions is in talent management. Now in order for a CEO to make a good decision, it's up to HR to do all these steps beforehand so that when you get to talent management, and you're discussing high potentials, succession plans, promotions, performance ratings, you have a very robust structure in place. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is about as technical of a slide as you'll see this entire presentation. So, but I just wanted to highlight the journey that you go on. If you're going to create an HR analytics function uh, within your organization, it's going to usually go through three separate stages uh, as it moves from being a beginner novice organization to an advanced predictive analytics driven HR function. So the first step is describe. The second step is infer. And the third step is predict. So you go through these three stages. You describe, you infer, and you predict. So in the first stage, describe, you're asking what is happening? What's happening in the business? And in this stage, usually executives want a KPI dashboard, right? They want some metrics. They want to understand what attrition is doing. What are the training courses? What are the certifications and so forth? What is happening? Now the skills to actually generate this data are not too bad. You can use Excel, you can use SQL Server, but most HR professionals who are non-technical can handle the described phase with minimal help from IT. However, as you move into the infer stage, now you're asking, why is it happening? And the point of data analytics is actually to reduce the amount of subjectivity and to use objective data-driven insights to help executives make decisions. So when you're doing the infer stage, you get some scary words coming, but you look at regression. Concepts like ANOVA, which is statistical concept. PCA, which is principal component analysis. These are just techniques. These are data science techniques. It's not that you need to know what they are, but these are techniques that are done to understand why something is happening. So you might have a CEO look at the attrition report, the rolling 12-month attrition, and go, why are, why are people leaving? What are the reasons that somebody resigns? Well, in data science, you can actually use these statistical methods to answer that question and to say, these are the reasons, from a statistical standpoint, that people are resigning. Now, how cool is that if you brought that to your CEO and you said that we think X, Y, and Z, if you were to fix these, would lower attrition? 
Pretty valuable, right? That's the point of HR analytics. Now, the predict stage is where things get a little crazy, right? It gets a little bit like, wow, this is Terminator, this is the future, this is um, robots running everything. And it is very cool, but you're getting into neural networks. These concepts of Markov chains and reinforcement learning, what that is is actually you can create a digital machine brain that processes the same way a human brain does. Maybe not at the same complexity, but neural network, all it is, is it's modeled after the way human brains function. It's a digital human brain. And you can use that digital human brain to look at billions and billions of data and give you insights into what's going to happen in the future. But it takes an advanced team and it takes an executive um, with a strong character and ethical compass to manage that kind of function. So describe, infer, predict are the three stages. Next slide, please. All right. Does this look like a house? Yeah. So this is this HR data governance piece. Now, the way I want you to look at this, now, this may seem like, gosh, he's showing me all these slides. This is super boring. Why did they schedule this at the end of the day? We need more coffee in here. But as you go through these slides, when we get to the facilitated exercise, you're going to remember this stuff, and you're going to go, OK, this is how I solve the problem. So at the top is your corporate strategy. So remember when the CEOs were saying there needs to be a connection between corporate strategy and HR strategy? Well, this framework helps you solve that. So corporate strategy is on the top. The two gray boxes below it deal with the workforce, the human plus machine workforce, as well as your processes, so how you actually get things done. If you're a manufacturer, if you're a service provider, whatever your processes are. Then underneath it is your governance model. So there are three governance layers that you can use to improve the quality of your data. So let's just get a sense. So who here can just shout out one of the governance layers, and it's just looking at these blue boxes, that you can use to improve the quality of your data? Anybody? What's one of them? What's that? KPI dashboard, man, you rock. That's awesome. Can you give him a round of applause? All right. And see, it's the end of the day, so I'm trying to like get us going, you know, so let's, let's have more folks talk. What are the other two? Just scream them out. There, I'll, I'll help. What's this? Content Hub, yeah. All right, what's the last one? Yeah, cool. This is not a union, by the way. It's not a union. All right, so when you're trying to drive quality data, you can do three things right away. You can set up a CHRO talent council, which should consist of the CFO, the chief information officer, as well as several kind of subject matter experts, but it's very important that the chair, the chair of this governance process is the CHRO, okay? It can't be any other executive. This council has to be run by the CHRO because it's the council that'll approve the KPIs. 